Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are in episode two. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Promotion. I'm ready. Okay, okay. We're going to get into this book. This wit. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> I'm just so jazzed. I got to punch things. Uh, a large leather bound antique book rests upon the clear desk. Should Alex read the book? Should we continue the story? Okay, good. That's the right button. <laughs> That's some intense reading. <laughs> I had no knowledge of what was to come. Look at her smiling. Nor did I care. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. As you read this, you will come to learn fear as I have. You too will come to understand. Or you will perish. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil of our reality. To see those who dwell behind. My life now has purpose. For I have learned the frailty of flesh, flesh and, and bone. bone. I was once a fool. Once. Where is Queer Scandamast? Where is Conservandai? This is a really great touch. Satis aquae sumat. Et animus eorum conferma. Hubna huis, dia sit modo prima multarum. Si ingeptum conficiamus. Quam primum, Centurio Augustus. Wolo rest. I would like to compliment you once more on your battle tactics. Our enemies did not have a chance. Do you believe that it really exists, Centurion? I do not doubt our Emperor's beliefs, or his orders, but if we are to retrieve the artifact, then we must be strong and patient. The language thing, yeah, I think is a really great touch. I'd love it if that were, like, more of a strategy and a lot more things. Now are they speaking Ancient Roman? Random stones? In a desert? How unlikely. The runes are their own thing, but stones, woo. <laughs> Pay attention to that color, that's yellow. <laughs> I know it's not a big deal, but... <laughs> to those of you who have never played this game before, man. You're in for a ride. All of those people who have played this game before and maybe want to have a little bit more thinking to do, that yellow color doesn't really correspond with much, does it? Think about that. I don't know where you are in uh, in all of this Eternal Darkness lore if you've never played this game or if you have, but uh, I, I don't know how to treat uh, my commentary in this case. I haven't really thought about it before. A ladder leads to the dark heart of the labyrinth. He's already identified it as a labyrinth. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> Danger lurks beneath, yet Pius's courageous resolve does not buckle. Or maybe he doesn't know better. Should Pius climb down the ladder? Mm. Oh, I hit the no button. Sorry. Eh. 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 That there. See, if I had a GameCube controller in my hand, this probably wouldn't be a thing. Whoops. Okay, we got ourselves a corpse. Rather frail looking. Not very, uh... Hmm. I mean, it's there. It's not... It's not incomplete. But that guy has a dice. <laughs> Ooh. That guy's also quite defensive about his dice. It's kind of a nice die, you gotta admit. It's got a sigil on it. Yeah, come over here, dude. The party's over here. I got, uh... I got my sword over here, yeah. It's real fancy. It's a gladius. What do I think about it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh... Check. Ah, there he is. 
Must be an emulation problem that we couldn't see before. This is a gladius, the standard weapon of the Roman army. A short, double-edged sword with a sharp, triangular point. The gladius was designed primarily for hacking and chopping at the enemy, but could be used to pierce armor as well. Might not be a problem, given uh, Mr. Naked over here. Mr. Naked. Okay, let me remember the controls. Okay. I want to attack you. Yeah, this is a mechanic. If you're not used to this game, we can hack off individual parts of the body. Yeah. Another major thing in this game is that there are finishers, and that we can do finishers on everybody. I think everybody, anyway. Absolutely everybody. This zombie's definitely not going to come up and attack me now, huh? Uh... Yeah, I got no camera control, so I can't- Whoa, I can't go check. Oh, jeez, slow down. Oh, jeez, no. Don't do this to me. Oh, no. Ah. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah, we- We could kind of imply health. <laughs> Did you know when somebody slaps you across the back or the front, it hurts? Something to think about. <laughs> In your everyday <laughs> ministrations, yes. So we got basic combat down. It's basically spam the attack button. That ain't so bad. We also got just now, we can see this, we can see Pius demonstrating it right now. He's gonna look at anything that's really important nearby. He's, well, he's, you see, he's already looking. If I, if I, I mean, he's looking kind of down right now, actually. <laughs> Whoops. Ooh, action pose! Pretty sweet! <laughs> uh, a strange granite block lies on the floor. That's a really nice sound effect for when you pick up something. I don't know if you quite heard it really well, but you're surely gonna hear it again. I guarantee it. Now, you, sir. Okay, you. Alright, good. Eh, and then eh. I think if you remove a zombie's ability to attack you, uh, it automatically just goes down for the count. Right now, these guys, uh, they can't find me, because they got no head. So, so they're, they're not gonna go walk about and try to figure out where I am. They're just going to, uh, swing wildly. As I suppose any good zombie would. Another granite block rests on the platform. We're gonna know the significance of each of these symbols real soon. I think. Okay, no, the run button's over here. Yeah. Whoops. Eh, 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 eh. Ha! Mm. Mm. Nope. Uh. Eh, eh. There is also a combo. If I don't aim for a part of the body, uh, this guy is just going to start swinging wild like that. And there's sort of supposed to be a combo like that, yes. The combo is actually the part I like the least in the combat thing, because usually it's kind of... kind of meaningless, I mean... Well, not meaningless, but it's kind of all over the place, I mean, like... You saw in the combo just there, he stuck his blade inside the stomach of uh, an enemy that had already fallen, and then used his foot to kind of pull it out. Wait a minute. I hear you, sir. Uh, there. There are benefits to doing the finishers, by the way, if you remember. But they're not immediately valuable to me right now because I don't have quite the entire game open to me. That's a fine blue color. Ooh. Not sure if Pius is going absolutely batshit crazy. I guess we'll find out, huh? Oh, the run button's over here, you idiot! <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna take a moment to save. We have saved. Alright. Hello, good sir. Good morrow to thee! <laughs> eh. Uh, is that a... You again. Bars across the door do that. Okay. Ah. Nice and linear, this part. Eh. Ooh. I think what we got here is a puzzle. We got four of them, though. 
Oh no, there's the fourth one. All right, that's good. I was afraid for a second that the game was uh, gonna drop me. Yeah. Okay, and then you, there. Okay. <laughs> the enemies have been effectively disarmed. Strange granite block, pick that up. I've always liked that symbol. Good. Do 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 do. The wall is prominently decorated with a strange lined symbol and carved into the granite. Cut into the wall is a square hole lined with scratches, as though something has been removed from it in yellow. <laughs> uh. Okay, hold up. I'm. Uh, which one was that? Uh, it's blue. I'm gonna have to use. Ooh, glowy. Whoops. What? Wait, you had something to say? The hole is filled with a granite block. It cannot be removed as though it is magically sealed in place. Not bad. Well, I mean, it's so far in there. I guess you'd need a plunger to pull it back out. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're red. Let's, uh, let's get you over here. Bueno. I'm trying to think now, do we ever get back into this temple later? Hmm, can't remember. There's so much about this game that I don't remember because it's been something like... Ah, oh, jeez. Six or something years since I've played this game. That's probably way off and completely inaccurate, but... It's been a long time since I've played it, so I don't remember too much. Actually, no, I'm pretty damn certain that we do come back here. What am I saying? <laughs> this is one of them games that where they reuse uh, sets and dungeons kind of a lot, now that I think about it. Which is really cool, because these dungeons are really nice. I mean, look at the wallpaper. <laughs> these monsters. They're always going to be there, just swinging. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're ever going to regenerate their heads. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, do I sneak up on him? He looks like me. Or, I mean, Pius. Pius, you must prove your worth by destroying this statue. Pressing R will enable Pius to uh, hit it. Okay. Releasing R slightly. And then pressing it again will. Sl uh, no, I don't need to do that. Uh, pressing it, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I will demonstrate. If I do this, it'll do that. If I do this, that, and that there, and then if I don't hold that at all, there. If I don't hold the direction at all, I mean. But I'm still holding the I'm ready to attack button, which classically is uh, either R or R2. In this case, it's, uh, I think... Uh, if I remember the GameCube controller well enough, it's just R. There's only the one trigger. Uh, on either side. That's right. Oh! Alright. Eh. Jeez, a little bit of slowdown in here, huh? Well. Ah, eh, the slowdown ain't so bad. Okay. That seems pretty simple. Examine. That's a neat button, though. A button attached to a small pylon so softly illuminates the room. Uh, some bizarre energy. Ah, wait. Should Pius push the button? Press the button. Yes, he should press the button. Ooh. Neat. Again, yellow. Hmm. I have been trying to isolate the sound of that magic, the, the those that three blast sort of thing, for a little while now. Can't seem to do it. There's always some background sound to uh, to try to remove, and I can't manage that. Now we must choose a color. I've made my decision. Yours, currently, for the purpose of this let's play, is irrelevant. Pale blue statuette floats gracefully along above a pedestal. Should Pius claim this artifact? Like a delicate doom. Uh, no, I want to look at. Uh, I want to look at these. Uh, red clawed worm mysteriously floats above. 
Huh. No. Okay, I'm glad I'm pushing the right buttons. <laughs> the correct buttons. Uh, an effigy resembling a warped angel. Huh. No. Okay. No, I want the blue one. I like the blue one. Me and Etten are friends. Some time passes. And now he too is a zombie! <laughs> but is he any different from the zombies we fought on our way here? Eons have passed since then, and I have learned much. I guess that's him talking. All at once, I understood. The forces of the multiverse all made sense under the transcending power of Ulyoth. No mountain too high, no city too far. Mm. Face me, and you shall surely perish. Damn. Alex has acquired the Tome of Eternal Darkness. Ooh. That makes me... Ooh. Ooh, tingly. I was thinking about this earlier today. I thought, uh, I realized that there's an interesting um, similarity between the Tome of Eternal Darkness and uh, the Pensieve from the Harry Potter books. I don't know if anybody else has uh, uh, thought about this, but I mean, effectively, we're reading this book and then reliving a part of someone else's life, more specifically when they died during their interaction with the ancients. And I thought that was kind of interesting how, you know, with the Pensieve, you're basically taking a bit of memory and then attending that sort of memory. It is a little bit similar. And uh, if this were not a video game, we probably wouldn't be playing the part of the person who's dying or of the, the main character or whatever. Uh, so perhaps we would just be attending then there too if, uh, if it hadn't been a video game. Anyhow! I think we're good for uh, for one episode. That's <laughs> looking at the timer now. Yeah, we're good. I think I'm going to maintain this structure though. Uh, do a dungeon or relive someone's past and then you know, just sort of fart around here uh, for a little bit. It's gonna make for some longer episodes, but uh, ooh, hey, you've changed. You're now blue for Ulioth. Ulioth is my favorite. That guy is so arrogant. I love it. <laughs> the guy knows everything and he really wants you to know about it. He's gonna rub it in your face. <laughs> He's gonna tell you that you don't matter. And it's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> uh, gee, now I don't quite remember what I'm supposed to do right now. The purpose for the time being, I think, is just to walk around. Let me at least... Uh... Ooh, that looked weird. Well, I mean... As I was saying, uh, I don't want to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to maintain some bit of structure. We're going to try to make this uh, something like 20 minute episode so that we can basically guarantee that we're going to finish a dungeon and uh, fart around a little bit. Uh, I don't think this is unlocked over here. Yeah. Oh, poor you, Alex. You went through such an ordeal before. Uh, wait, am I... Tome of Eternal... yeah. Whoops! This is the Tome of Eternal Darkness, where experience, spells, and enchanted items can be stored for future use. Inside the book? Damn. It has been made from fragments of human flesh and bone, and endowed with magical powers. M-A-G-I-C-K-A-L. The original spelling. Galadius. Second floor key. Huh. Well... Now that I see that I have the second floor key, I know what I'm going to do. Next episode! Join us next time. We're going to figure out exactly what we need to do to enter the second, or the second, probably the third, second or third, the next chapter of Eternal Darkness. Thank you, and good night.